The Puma Fast Track Nitro is a no frills, no nonsense, do it all on any type of terrain type of shoe. Does it do it well or just so-so? And is this the cheaper road to trail shoe for you? Well, let's find out. Well, hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven. First, I need to let you know that Puma did send the Fast Track Nitro to me to review for the sole purpose of the review. They're not paying me for this. They're not gonna see the footage ahead of time. I'm gonna share my complete honest thoughts just like always. First, we're gonna start off by talking about the stats of the Puma Fast Track Nitro. First, it is a neutral road to trail shoe, and it is very flexible. As you can see, there is a lot of flex to the shoe. As for the stack height of the Fast Track Nitro, the men's in the rear is a 29 millimeter, and the front is a 21 millimeter for an eight millimeter drop. And my men's size 11 weighed in at 10.4 ounces or 295 grams. Really a pretty average weight for a daily training shoe. Not bad. The colorway on this one is the Fast Yellow and Puma Black, which I really think is a sharp looking shoe. I really kind of, I like this a lot. As for the fit of the shoe overall, the way it hugs your foot is more on that snug size. We'll get into more details uh, in, in the upper, but the length of the shoe fits pretty normal for about a men's size 11 for my foot. However, if your foot is on the slightly wider side of average, you might wanna go up about a half a size. Hey, real quick, scroll down, do the YouTube stuff, click that thumbs up button, give the video a like. It really does help out the video a lot and I would really appreciate it, that'd be cool. The upper of the Puma Fast Track Nitro is a dual layer mesh. As you can see, this outer layer is a rip stop type fabric. It really seems like it's gonna be quite durable and really protect your foot while you're on those trails from any sticks that might snag your foot. Uh, you know, I don't think this is gonna tear easily. I think it's gonna take a lot to wear this out. And as you can see on the lateral side of the shoe, there are what Puma calls their form strips. These four little lines here provides a little bit of stability and a little bit of uh, support to the shoe. As for the breathability of the Fast Track Nitro, it's, uh, it's not the most breathable shoe, we'll say that. Take a look at the tissue test. When I put it on low, the tissue barely moved, really. It just yeah, it barely moved. Even when I switched it to high, the tissue did go up, but it was not fast. It kind of just gently rose uh, and combined that airflow with the way the shoe fits overall, the kind of the snugness of it, which we'll talk about. I do think this might be a warmer shoe in a warmer climate. So keep that in mind. So far in the 50, 60 degree weather here in Colorado, it's not been an issue. As for the toe box of the Fast Track Nitro, kind of the theme I've mentioned a little bit, it is more snug on the foot. So if you have toes that really like to splay out oh, quite a bit, it might be a little tight for you. It's not been that much of an issue for me. It's really felt fine and nice and secure. One neat thing on the front of the shoe, which you can see right here on the front, uh, these are called drainage ports. Uh, cut out in this overlay, it's on both sides of the shoe. So that's designed obviously if you submerge your foot in water to help drain uh, pretty quickly. I haven't had the chance to test it yet. I've not run in uh, big puddles of water or through creeks to test it, unfortunately, but uh, having that there is definitely a plus. So hopefully it does work well in practice. As for the lacing system of the Fast Track Nitro, it works really pretty well. It stays tied. They don't come undone. It keeps your foot nice and secure. The eye stays here on the, uh, the upper are integrated into the upper of that dual layer mesh. It kind of folds over and that really helps when you tie the shoe, when you cinch it down tight, it helps draw that upper over your foot and get a real nice secure fit. On the tongue down here on the lower part, you can see this little reddish color piece. That is an elastic band where you can tuck those laces down under if they're a little bit long for you. For me, they haven't been long, which is unusual. Usually laces are quite long on my foot, but uh, these laces are a perfect size. They don't hang down and drag the ground, so I did not have to tuck them in. The tongue itself is fairly padded. It's not thick, it's not thin, it's just kind of a good level of padding and uh, it really protects your foot from those laces. You're not gonna have any issue with it digging into your foot, at least I didn't. And lastly on that tongue, it is fully gusseted on both sides. As for the heel cup here at the back of the shoe, it is slightly padded. It's not overly padded or plush. Uh, it's, it's decent. I will say though that the uh, heel collar itself here is higher than on some shoes and it did actually rub the lateral uh, outside portion of my ankle a little bit. It wasn't too uncomfortable, but it was noticeable, that's for sure. Uh, also on the back here, the heel counter is uh, has a little flexibility to it. It's bending in there pretty good as you can tell, but the angle of it uh, did create some problems for my foot. So I went on a two hour run with these and honestly, about halfway through, I started feeling some discomfort in the back here of the heel cup where it was rubbing my heel raw and it actually caused blisters on both of my feet, both the left and right heels, and it was quite uncomfortable. I actually went to go lace these up yesterday to go run in them again before I do this video. And I went out of the house about four tenths of a mile, turned around, came back, and I ended up putting on another pair of shoes because I could feel it was gonna start rubbing again. So definitely an issue. I think the heel collar, the heel cup here, 
Uh, it needs to be more padded. We need a little bit different angle and the heel collar itself could be a little bit lower, at least for my specific foot shape. It could definitely be better. And finally, at the back of the shoe, you can see there is an elastic pull tab to help kind of get that up on your foot. Overall, the upper is very durable. I think it's gonna last quite a long time. It's very comfortable. It is a snugger, snugger fit, that's a word, I guess, a more snug fit on your foot, but it does feel secure. Uh, the only issue for me is this, this heel, like I mentioned, it needs some improvement and then it would be a real winner of an upper. The midsole of the Puma Fast Track Nitro is a dual density foam composed of an inner core, full length core of that nitro injected foam and then an outer layer of the Pro Foam Light EVA foam. So that nitro core is designed to provide superior responsiveness and cushioning in a very lightweight package. Whereas that Pro Foam Light EVA is designed to uh, cushion your landing and propel every step forward in an extremely lightweight package. Puma rates this as a medium level of cushioning. In my testing, I found this midsole to be uh, a little flat feeling. So far, it's really, I've, I've not felt that superior responsiveness that's claimed of that nitro midsole. I've just not felt it. It's not an exciting shoe to run in and it doesn't leave you feeling like it's a fast shoe. One would think with a name like Fast Track Nitro that it would be a faster shoe. That's not the case, at least in my uh, testing with this. It just, it does not feel responsive. It's, it's a very bare bones, uh, type of shoe and the ride kind of feels like that. However, the Fast Track Nitro is designed to be that road to trail shoe. It's not designed to be a speed shoe or a racing shoe, just an interesting name. However, like I said, it's designed for that road to trail and in my testing, it did really well. Uh, you know, I'd run two miles on pavement to go do a single track trail and then I would run on the trail and feel very secure. Uh, it felt great on the terrain, whether that was uh, dirt, hard packed gravel or you know or uh, mud it was fine so in that regard the midsole does work for that road to trail it's just not an exciting ride i think this midsole does provide more ground feel versus cushion so if you like more of that ground feel underneath of your foot then you should probably like these for me personally i probably would not take these for a 20 mile run just because uh it's it probably would be a little fatiguing on my foot personally. Honestly, I probably wouldn't take it more than an hour because of that heel issue we talked about in the upper. It would just be too uncomfortable. But if it fits your foot well and you don't have that issue, I think you will get lots of miles out of this midsole. I think it's gonna last quite a while and be durable. So I think in that regard, it could be a real winner for if it fits your foot well up above. The outsole of the Puma Fast Track Nitro is the Puma Grip ATR for all terrain. And it's a fantastic compound. I've said it before when talking about the Deviate Nitro Two, which is also that same that same compound even though it's a road shoe it's fantastic it provides great grip whether that's cruising on the road rock hopping single track trail whatever it is i have had no issues with grip it's been really kind of surprising to be honest with you i've enjoyed it it just leaves you feeling confident when you're out on the trails and uh, i think a part of that is this lug pattern as you can see there uh, kind of wider, a little bit more flat. So when you are on the roads, maybe going to the trail, it feels pretty comfortable. It's not uncomfortable underfoot. And I think these lugs are about a three millimeter depth. I couldn't find it anywhere to give you the exact number, but I would say three to three and a half millimeters tops is what I would say. And they work well. The only thing with a shallow lug like that is if you are running through mud, sometimes it can kind of clump up on the shoe a little bit and uh, tend to not shed off too well. Overall, the Puma Grip ATR is really one of the better compounds out there, probably just a little below Vibram. It's really quite tacky and sticky. Uh, however, with that said, with this shoe, with those shallow lugs, if you are gonna be running in a really sloppy area, wet trail, something like that, you probably want a little more aggressive tread pattern. As for the price of the Puma Fast Track Nitro, it retails for 120 US dollars. Yes, you heard me right, 120 US dollars in this colorway. There's actually a colorway out there that's 110 US dollars. That's amazing. I mean, in this day and age when most shoes at the base level are like 145 or more, uh, this is fantastic. So Puma, please do not follow the trend of other brands and price your consumers out of the shoe. This is an affordable shoe that most people could probably get. And yeah, let's keep it that way. Great job on the pricing. Well, the bottom line of the Puma Fast Track Nitro is this is truly a road to trail shoe and it does a pretty darn good job of it. For me personally, I'm probably not gonna be reaching for this shoe to go lace up for a run too often because of the heel issue in my foot shape. But if it fits your foot well, 
I think you will get many miles out of this shoe. That upper is very durable. The midsole I think is gonna last decently as well. And then this, this outsole is probably gonna be the longest lasting thing on this shoe. It's gonna last you a long time. And at that price point, you really can't beat it. Well, now's the time for you to let us know down below in the comments. Have you tried the Fast Track Nitro? What have your experiences been? Let everyone know. I'm sure they'd be very interested to hear your thoughts as well. And while you're down there, go ahead and click that thumbs up button and give the video a like. That really does help out a lot. And I would really appreciate that. Maybe consider clicking subscribe as well if you're new and you'll see more content like this in the future. Well, if you want to take a look at a road shoe that I think would pair very well with this as a training partner and you could also race in it, why don't you take a look at the full review of the Puma Deviate Nitro 2 on your screen. I really enjoyed that shoe. It's probably my favorite Puma running shoe to date so far. So check that one out. And then on this side of the screen, we'll put a playlist up of some other Puma shoes to check out as well. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate you all and I'll see you on the next one.